Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a full review. This is gonna be a long video, guys, and a full in-depth on two brushes. One I've just picked up. So we're gonna go head to head with the Grios Verse Iwata, and it's the PS771 by Grios, Mr. Hobby, versus the Iwata Custom Micron, and it is the CMSB Side Feed versus a Top Cup Airbrush. I'm going these two against each other because they're both 0.18 mil needle setups and it's the closest I can get for two brushes for the fine detail for when you're doing portraits, fine detail work, miniature work, things like that. So this is going to be my full review guys on these two brushes. I'm going to take you through rounds on these so you'll have like round one, round two, then we'll do a final round, final thoughts on the brush. I'm going to take you through spray tests on both brushes, transparent and opaque through these, air pressure settings on both brushes as well. So I'll see you in the first round. Round one guys, and it's going to be airbrush features on both brushes. I'll take you through the Custom Micron for a starter. I've owned this brush now probably four years when you get your custom micron, you get it in a real nice metal case that the brush comes in. You get the Iwata super lube with it, and you will get a little water trap that you can screw onto the bottom of the airbrush, and then you can put your quick connect on the bottom of that, which clips onto your airline. So they're the two pieces you get in that box with the micron. You get all your instructions. So the brush itself, it's a 0.18 mil. This is the V2 version Custom Micron and it's a side cup airbrush. On these you have a pin at the side. You can take that pin out and you can move the cup to the opposite side. So preference if you're left or right handed, you can put the cup to what side you want to give you that little bit of clearance, a little bit of room. The good thing about the side cups is if you're painting and you're on an angle, you can adjust your cup and tilt your cup so your paint don't spill out. So if you're working on something really high up, you can just tilt that cup and your paint will always stay. If you're working with a top cup airbrush that hasn't got a cap on the top, you could tilt and you could spill your paint. So that's a little bonus you get with the Micron guys. These are double action airbrushes. So if you don't know what a double action airbrush is, on a double action you will press down and you'll hear your air coming out and then you'll move the trigger back and then you'll get your paint coming through with that guy. So that's a double action airbrush. A single action will be you press down and air and paint will be mixed together and come straight out the end of the brush. So a single action is just straight the way down and it comes straight out. Double action down for air, back for paint. On these you have got your cap at the front that you can unscrew and take off. I always work my airbrushes with the cap off because when you're painting you tend to get a bit of tip dry with your paint, it builds up after a while of airbrushing and you can just pinch and clear your needle. The Microns is nice because you've got quite a bit of needle exposed on the front so you've got something to pinch and grab hold of. On these, the triggers are really smooth, they're accurate, they're very, very sensitive as well. So if you're going in, you, the slightest movement on a Micron, precision-wise, they are bang on. Um, for paint, when you're going in, you've only got to touch the trigger and you've got paint coming out nice and smooth. You've got your adjuster at the back, and what this does is, this will set your trigger on how far it comes back. So if you dial that right the way in, that stops your trigger dead. And if you move that out slightly, you'll get a little bit of movement in your trigger. It's basically like if you've used a big spray gun, you can dial your fluid in. And that's basically what you're sort of doing on this brush. You're dialing in how much trigger, same as a big brush. So it's just that version of a big spray gun, miniature down into an airbrush, exactly the same. So that's my little run through on 
the custom micron on what you'd need to know when you get the brush. Great brush, would recommend it. Um, I've worked up the range, I didn't just buy this one straight away. I worked up and started off with Harder and Steenbeck, worked up through their range, then I moved on to Iwata, worked up through their range, and now I've moved on to Grios, and I'm working up through their range. So that's the Custom Micron guys, brilliant brush, We'll move on to round two, and I'll talk you through prices on round two. So we'll now move on to the PS771 This is by Mr. Hobby Grios, and this is a 0 0.18 setup, needle setup as well. This one is a top cup airbrush. It's also a double action airbrush, so it'll be down for air, back for paint, guys. On these, you get a cup on the top. As I said about the Micron, you can tilt the cup on that. This one's a fixed cup to the top, so you put your cap on the top, and that would basically stop your paint dropping out. So that's not a problem. You've also got the adjuster, like you have on the Micron, on the back. Nice and smooth, like the Micron. You've got your numbers on the side, like the Micron, you can dial that in. Turn it right the way up and that stops your trigger. Dial that out and you've got trigger movement as well. Both airbrushes, nice soft trigger response on these. This brush is a little bit longer than the Micron. So the Micron is a shorter brush guys. So it does can feel a little bit smaller in your hand. I tend to find this brush nice because it's a little bit longer and that just sits, just feels like it's just got that little bit more meatier brush in your hand than the Micron. The Micron, if you've got big hands, the Micron can feel a bit small. So you've got your adjust at the back for your trigger. Uh, on the front of these, you've got the Mac valve. And what this does guys is, when you clip your airline to the bottom, if you've got say you're running 20 to 25 psi on your airline coming in and you're working away and you've got to drop your pressure you've now got to go to your compressor or lean down and you've got to adjust your pressure on the main line the beauty of these is you can dial your air pressure in on the front of the brush which is really good guys and these work exceptionally well i want to do these as well on some of their brushes on some of the microns the micron that would be closest to this is the cmc plus looks identical to this and you've got your mac valve on the front so you can adjust your air pressure on there which works really nice because that's close to the front end where your paint's coming in so you can get a real fine adjust on that guys everything else front end if you look at the front end of the micron they look absolutely identical on the front so that's the Grios guys, that's the PS771. Nice chrome finish, like the Micron. Build quality, really nice. Um, what we'll do now is we'll move on to round two and I'll go through the prices on both of these brushes and then I'll break you down the prices on maintenance on these brushes. So if you were to damage parts of these brushes I can give you a little rough price guide, up-to-date price guide, 2021 prices guys, on both of these brushes. So I'll see you in round two. Right, we're moving on to round two now guys, and I'll give you the prices of the brushes to date, and I'll give you a little bit of maintenance costing list on what these would cost you between the two brushes on parts on the basic parts that I think you would basically go through when you're airbrushing, things that can get damaged more often than other parts. So I'll give you a little breakdown on these two brushes. We'll start off with the Micron. The price of the CMSB, this is the V2 version, custom Micron. These are 360 plus your shipping. So you're probably looking at about, getting close probably onto nearly 400 for these. If you were to damage the needle, and it is quite possible you can, because when you're working with these and you've got the cap off the front, you've got the needle exposed, 
and if you're going detailed work, if you're working on like a bike tank, something like that, you can sometimes dink the needle and it's so easy to just flatten that point off and bend the needle. You can buy sharpening tools to straighten these out, uh, but after a while, each time you resharpen it and resharpen it, you will wear away and it will either go thinner or it will just change the character characteristics of that needle and you'll eventually end up buying a new needle. So a new needle for the Custom Micron, which is a 0 0.18, will cost you £25.54. That's for the new needle. If you were to damage the nozzle on the front of these, they're 56 99 if you're to damage the crown cap, they're 20 pounds. Uh, the nozzle cap are 39.94. And if you were to completely smash the front end on it, you shouldn't, but if it happened, uh, you're looking at 164.99 just for that front end there on the brush. So it can work out quite expensive to replace parts on the custom Micron. Um, I've not even ran through like the bits, like all in the internals in here, the cup, the trigger, it can just work out expensive guys. So you've got to treat them with kid gloves. As I say, I've had that one four years. I've not changed a single thing on it. I've not done the needle or anything. It's been absolutely fine. But I do take care in my brushes, uh, maintenance wise, cleaning, just keep them tip top. As you can see, that looks near enough brand new and that's four years old and there's not a mark on that one. So that's the Micron. We'll move on now to the PS771. The price on these are £216, then you've got your shipping on top. Uh, the needle setup and the front end assembler are identical to the custom Micron. So if you were to dent the needle on this one, the price for the Griot's needle is £13.40 compared to £25.54. So there's a saving there, guys. Your nozzle on the Grios is £22 as opposed to £56.99 and so on. If you were going to do the complete head assembly on the front of this one, it works out to £61.50 as opposed to £164.99. So in my eyes, guys, in this round, the Grios hands down is a more affordable brush and if things go wrong with it, you're not gonna break the bank on the parts if you need to replace any parts on it. But then saying that, the Custom Micron is a dearer brush, but that's four years old and I've not changed a single thing on it. So whether it is just because I'm over careful with my airbrushes, I don't know, but I'll probably do another review on this in another four years and it should be exactly the same as that. I can't see any faults with this whatsoever. You look at the front end of these two brushes and they look absolutely identical. They really do in every way. So this round I'd say goes to the Griots guys for price on the brush. Uh, you're getting the same features and set up as the Micron and for maintenance, it's not going to break your bank as if you had the Micron and something went wrong. You're going to be putting your hand in your pocket. It's going to cost you a lot more money. So I will see you in round three and we'll get these two brushes set up with the airline and we'll do a full spray test and see how these two brushes perform against each other. See you in round three. Guys, I've hooked up the Micron. We are running just over 20 PSI, probably about 23, 24 PSI. I've dropped some golden acrylics. This is a shading gray, so this is a transparent, so it's a lot thinner than the opaque. So we're just gonna do some little test on how these two brushes spray. And then in the final round, I'll give you my thoughts on what I think you should purchase if you've got the money. So yeah, let's move on guys. So I'm just gonna do basic um, dot tests on this. We're gonna see how the paint performs. 
I've got the adjuster full back, so I've got full trigger on this as well. So I'm just going to do some dots. And the Micron on that size dot atomizes the paint really nice. You've not got any like bits coming out. It's nice and smooth, soft on the dots. And if I go full back, a little bit of splatter there. That's probably a little bit of build up on the needle. So I always take the caps off and you can just clean the needle like that. That's not a problem. So yeah, that's full back on the dot. So again, 20 odd PSI, that's nice and soft on them dots. Detail wise on dots, we can go right in. And the beauty of the Micron is they are very, very accurate guys. You've only got to nudge that needle. And as you can see there, if that's picking that up there, tiny little dots going along, nice and accurate. The trigger's really smooth on these. Um, it feels effortless with the Micron when you're going in. You won't feel sort of afraid you tend to be like oh is the paint coming out you know exactly when the paint's coming out on a micron it's like instant on these little dots again we'll do some lines with this so yeah nice this probably needs a little flush through this brush. But yeah, nice, accurate, smooth lines. Run out of paint. They're just a really, really nice brush, guys. You heard that there where I just dink the needle into the paper. That's something you've got to be really careful of. When you're aiming to get real fine detail, you're putting that needle really close to that paper. But I do find the needles on these Microns are robust. I've dinked the paper before quite a few times on these and it's not damaged the needle on these. So that's my little test on the paint on the Micron with transparent at 20, 25 PSI. So what we'll do is we'll drop a bit of opaque in So this is a little bit thicker. That opaque's just coming through now. And that's fine guys again. Lines. You probably find you've got to bring your pressure up just a little bit more with an opaque. But again, Detail wise, bang on again, Micron, yeah. You know when you've got a Micron in your hand when it comes to detail. And then shading you get. Yeah, absolutely fine guys. Great brush. If you can afford one, yeah, brilliant brush. They work, they'll do what you want them to do. That's been transparent, just give you some little dots, few lines, yeah, works how an airbrush should, can't fault it. 
you'll get that with an eclipse. You'll get that finished there with an eclipse, not a problem, but you will find that you just know you've got an expensive brush in your hand when you've got the marker in your hand. You just, the feel of it, it just shades really, it's smooth, it's accurate, it's, it's just a well-designed brush. I want to know what they're doing when it comes to making airbrushes. They've been around for a long time, guys, and it's a cracking brush. That's why I got one, and that's why it still performs like it did when I first got it, and it's four years old, this brush. So yeah, brilliant brush. I can't go Micron wins the spray test at the minute, because I could pick the Eclipse up and I could show you exactly the same dots and exactly the same lines with an Eclipse. So you can't always say a 360 pound brush will be better than that because I can, I can, because I've been airbrushing for so long, I can get the same detail and effects with a cheaper brush because I'm just so used to on how to work a trigger, feather the trigger, to get these effects. So that's the micro. We'll now move on and we'll chuck a bit of paint in the griots and see what this is like. So I'll take the cap off just the same. We'll drop a bit of Shading grey in and try this, guys. Yeah. Exactly the same, guys. Atomizes the transparent as the Micron did. Exactly the same. There's no spitting. Let's just go a little bit darker on there. Exactly the same, and dots. Just as precise as the Micron, tiny little pin dots, and the trigger feels Feels like it's got a little bit more tension than the Micron. The Micron feels a little bit softer, but you can release the spring tension on this, so I could soften that up to match that. This one is a flatter top. The Micron's flat and wider. That doesn't affect me one bit, whether that trick, it doesn't matter. I find this just as comfortable as that when I'm airbrushing. Uh, exactly the same tiny little dots as the Micron, as these are both 0.18 setups. Lines, yep, tiny feather lines with this, really, really feather lines. I mean, that's real fine that's pencil line guys that's like a real sharp pencil line on that dagger strokes yeah nice accurate shading is nice atomizes really really well you're going to get your tip dry like in every airbrush We'll chuck a bit of opaque in it. Yeah, atomizes opaque really nice at this pressure. There's no spitting. We're running 25 PSI on this, on both brushes. And they're identical, identical on, to me, on that shading. They're both atomizing the same. In fact, I'll do the MAC valve on this and I'll drop that pressure down. A 
that's probably running 10 psi and that is still atomizing that opaque absolutely spot on guys and that is very very fine lines Yep, identical guys. From Micron to this, performance wise, absolutely identical in both ways. Shading, spot on, the same lines, dots, detail, exactly the same. Bonus on this brush, Mac valve as opposed to no Mac valve on the Micron, but if you went for the CMC Plus, you'd get the Mac valve on the front, so you could mirror match it to that. So yeah, both performing exactly the same. Right, final thoughts guys. On the two brushes we've done the review on, you've got the Micron V, Mr. Hobbit, Grios, the PS, 771 versus the Micron CMSB V2, which is that they're both 0.18 setups. So this is my opinion and thought on these two brushes. Um, Price-wise, Griot's hands down is not gonna kill you when you buy one. It's a cheaper brush, all the parts are cheaper. So maintenance on this brush, I can't give you a in-depth on four years down the line, the Micron, I can, four years down the line, never missed the beat, never changed any of the parts on it, it's been absolutely fine, but if I did need to change the parts, it's gonna sting me, um, as I give you that little breakdown in the prices. So the Griot's, brand new brush to me. The only thing I can base the Griot's off of is its little brother, which is the PS2710, which is a 0.2 needle, and I can get the details down like the Micron with this. So yeah, cracking brush, and I would recommend it at 118 pound. It will do you detailed portraits and all your fine stuff. Brilliant brush, works. So that's why I went for the 0.18 on this. So after basing it on that, this should be absolutely fine as well. 216 pound versus the Micron at 360. Hands down the Grios, Grios beats it on price and beats it on parts, guys. So if you dink your needle, 13 pound you can chin. 25 pound, 54. Yeah, it's not that expensive, but it, it's more money, guys. And if you smash the front head on this, 61 pound. If you drop the Micron and smash the front head up complete on that, £164.99 so yeah big difference so Grios on price and parts is a winner performance as you've seen with the two test panels so that's the Micron that's the Grios both sets of lines on the transparent and opaque are identical atomization identical uh, dot work, detail work, lines with both paints in both brushes at the same PSI, identical. So yeah, for performance, they're matched. So again, that would steer towards round two, the Griot's wins because for one, it's a cheaper brush and it is matching the Micron. So you do not need the Micron to get them types of lines and dots and detail work the cheaper brush will do exactly the same job and i could then throw the review and throw that into the mix with a 0.2 and i will get you the same dots lines with this brush as them two and this one is cheaper than both of them so you do not need a 360 pound brush guys to get them style of dots 
and fine lines because the 116 pound one can get it so it's entirely up to you where you want to spend your money or where you want to throw your money um, yes I water brilliant brushes I own loads of them and I own spray guns by I water as well hands down they are great they last long that's four years old and that looks brand new absolutely brand new there's nothing worn on it none of the bits are knocked on it it's all in lovely condition as I brought it out the box that in four years time I don't know I don't know what it's going to look like it will probably look completely different to that all scratched and worn but me personally I don't think it will because I keep my brushes in tip-top condition I'll always clean them so for me that will look exactly the same in four years that one's four months old and yeah the only thing that's on that is fingerprint marks but everything else on that works absolutely spot on so it's entirely up to you guys if you're a beginner check the Griot's range out you will not look back go for the PS 270 guys 0.2 if you're a beginner cracking brush you won't look back nice and easy to use easy to clean cheaper on parts than both of the other two brushes so yeah Griot's cracking brush as a beginner if you are going and looking at getting into this long haul and doing this for years like I have if you can afford it and you're doing a lot of detailed portrait work custom micron yes it's 360 pound but that's 360 pound and that's four years old guys and it's mint I've not changed anything on that brush so yeah I cannot knock it it's a great brush and it's 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 earned its money hands down that's earned its money time and time and time again so yeah worth the 360 if you can afford it but personally I wish this was around when I first got that because I would have had one of these in a heartbeat back then um, this probably was around but I didn't know the make at the time and our water was the next brush up for me from Harvard and Steenbeck but Griot's guys cracking brush they know what they're doing and apparently they come out the same fat tray so like the front head assembly identical to the micron everything about it is micron and the way it feels you've seen on the spray test it is exactly the same and you're paying a lot cheaper so it's entirely up to you guys I give you my honest review on these brushes and I've had the Micron four years so that isn't I know the Micron in and out I know exactly what it can do what it will handle what it won't handle I've took most paints through that and that's going to be the same that will be the same after going from the PS270 I've chucked thinners I've chucked solvent paint through this acrylic paint through this fine absolutely fine the only thing you will get on these you will start to get a discolor if you're using a lot of thinners and stuff like that you'll get a discoloration in your cup where it will start to just eat away and tarnish the bottom of that but i've had harder and steam backs for 10 years chuck thinners through them it's tarnished the inside of the cup and it's not changed the airbrush it's not damaged it in any way like it's performance wise it's been absolutely the same spot on so that bit doesn't bother me i've always blasted a little bit of thinners through as i have with this and that absolutely fine same with them absolutely fine so yeah that's my review guys i hope you've enjoyed this video and got something out of it if you're after one of these brushes any of these brushes check out them guys really really good highly recommend them you can get all your parts they do everything on there guys compressors they can get custom air leads so that's www.aircraft.net give them a look for your best prices on airbrushes and yeah i will see you in the next one guys
Thanks for watching. Thank you.